part as we walk through here you'll see oftentimes it's mounded up um, and that's a tactic used to both you know change the elevation change the landscape a little bit it also gives us a chance to bring in larger trees for a bigger impact upon opening um, so there's some really large American hollies in there that we could only do by mounding it up and that system is used later on and there are other places where it's a uh, raised planters and that you know basically adds whatever the height is sometimes it's up to 36 inches total so let's say something's not working with the you know you're hands on you see it yep do you have to go through the levels of bureaucracy or can you just take it out and put in something else um because the second section is under a warranty by the company who plants it there is some amount of you know we have to kind of check in with them, show them that this plant isn't working before we remove it, and then we can suggest other plants. Um, that warranty period is one year. So in section one, we are free to, you know, amongst our own, like without, within our department, we can talk about, I'm gonna take this out, and then we will make recommendations. It'll get approved by our director and so forth. So. It's different, but yeah, because this is under warranty, there's a little more. But I mean, we've been working with Pelto now for three years, so they have a pretty good understanding of our knowledge and understanding of plants and respect for us, and we have a respect for them and their you know needs. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes um, we have. If it's something major, yeah, we would definitely have to take it to the design team. We have um, some. Junipers that are planted very close to amelanchiers and roses in here, which is the perfect setup for cedar apple rust. If we find it to be a problem, we might try and pull out the junipers, but that's something that we would have to take through the design team and give them our reasons why and have proof as to what the problem is. So the design team stays involved, and Pete Udov stays involved. He comes through a couple times a year, you know, walks through what's working, what's not working. So. It's very much a collusion, yeah. You said that the soil was 18 to 36 inches. Do you use um, like a green roof membrane uh -huh. system underneath? Yeah, the bottom is like a typical green roof. It's like um, basically like egg cartons filled with crushed gravel. Um, and on top of that is sand and then filter fabric. And the idea is that the water collects in the egg cups and moves up uh, through um, capillary action through the soil. Uh, are there plants that became your favorites as a result of your experience on the High Line? Things that maybe you weren't so aware of before, but... I mean, personally, absolutely, yeah. There's definitely plants that I didn't know before I came here that I've come to love. There are definitely plants that at some time in the year we all loved, and then a little bit later they really couldn't take it up here and became very problematic, these open spaces. Um, this here is uh, Tolima grandiflora. It's a northwest native plant that was beautiful when it flowered this spring, unfortunately before the park opened. Well, unfortunately for you. Um, <laughs> and then as it just got hot, it was I think it was too hot for it here, and it started to really not look great. So yeah, it goes both ways. And some plants have really shown their ability to, you know, withstand anything really. Is um, there one season that's more stressful than another given the conditions? For the plants or the gardeners? <laughs> <laughs> the plants, but you could say the gardeners. Um, well, I, I, it's interesting. We kind of often say that, um, we think we're a zone colder in the winter and hotter in the summer. You know, this is a bridge and bridges freeze first. So any, we don't have like soil that's warmer down below because it's getting cold from below. So I would say winter is pretty rough. Plus we have this harsh wind off the Hudson all winter. And then on the flip side, summer is really hot up here. We don't have the cool soil below and it's hot from all all sides and the concrete just adds another thing that reflects and the buildings and the gravel. Amazing anything grows. Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> so yeah, I mean I think probably winter and summer are the two harshest. Um, you know, some spring and fall are just kind of 
fun times to enjoy. From a gardening perspective, definitely our busiest time is spring. Um, one of the main kind of components of Pete's designs are that he values the seed head as much as the flower, um, and and he leaves. He encourages gardeners to leave the plants up all through the winter, you know, to emphasize the skeleton shape of the plant. So whereas in a lot of gardens you'll find the gardeners kind of putting the plants, like putting them to bed, getting them ready for winter by cutting the plants down and mulching, we leave everything up. And it makes for a really beautiful landscape in the winter time. The, the way the snow falls on a lot of the seed heads is really beautiful up here. It makes, I mean, like, I think a lot of the seed heads are beautiful. The rose hips of that rosa glauca mm -hmm. behind us, I think, are gorgeous, and a lot of people would maybe cut them well, off. The birds like it, too. Mm -hmm. That's another great thing about it. We have so many birds mm -hmm. that eat, I mean, you, we see them get fatter up here throughout the season. <laughs> um, what that means is in the spring, we have to cut everything back before it starts to grow again and before any bulbs start to come up. Um, or as the bulbs are coming up. So that's really busy. That's not to say that we're not doing any pruning or weed, I mean weeding and, and thinning out of plants all summer long. We do it all summer long. It's just really intense in the spring. We welcome volunteer help then. So. I was going to ask if you've got